Hi, my name is Amy Bailey and I'm president of the Alliance of Channel Women. Our mission is to advance the careers and leadership roles for women at the highest levels in the technology channel by providing education, community, advocacy, and opportunities for personal growth. Today, we're gonna to read some stories for you from a book called Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls. I chose a woman named Sophia Ionskew, and she is a nurse, neurosurgeon. Once there was a girl with wonderful hands, strong and steady with long, elegant fingers. With hands like those, you could be a pianist or a painter, her school teacher said. Art and music are all very well, but Sophia had something else in mind. A young friend of hers had died following brain surgery. Sophia wanted to become a neurosurgeon to help save the lives of people like her friend. At that time, there were hardly any female doctors in Romania and female neurosurgeons were extremely rare everywhere in the world. Sophia's teachers didn't think she was smart enough to even get into medical school, but she studied hard by the light of the sh street lamp shining through her bedroom window. And with her mother's constant support, she passed all her courses and exams and became a doctor. During the Second war World War, Sophia volunteered to take care of wounded soldiers in the hospital near her home. She operated on them, mostly performing amputations when their arms or legs had been so dam badly damaged that they could not be saved. But she still wanted most of all to be a neurosurgeon operating on the brain. One day she got her chance. A boy was rushed into the hospital with terrible injuries to his head. None of the other surgeons were there. As bombs fell around them, Sophia took a scalpel and looked at her hands. They were strong and steady as always. That day, she saved the young boy's life. After the war, Sophia trained as a neurosurgeon and through her long and distinguished career, she saved many, many more lives. Sophia was born April 25th, 1920 and died March 21st, 2008 in Romania. And here's a picture of her. Hi guys, my name is Cassie Jepson and I am the director of North America Channel Programs at Lenovo. I'm also on the board for the Alliance of Channel Women. I'm super excited to share with you a story out of the book, Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls 2. I've chosen Eleanor Roosevelt to share with you guys. She's one of my favorites. Not only was she a pioneer and a very forward thinking woman for her time, um, she paved the way for a lot of the human rights activism and different policies that, that we have today about how um, human rights are defined and treated. So she's super special. Um, she also has one of my favorite quotes. And that quote is, do one thing every day that scares you. This is so important to get outside of your comfort zone and find things that challenge you. It really helps you to be innovative and to grow. Um, so let's learn a little bit about Miss Eleanor Roosevelt. So Eleanor Roosevelt was a politician, um, but let's talk about how she came to be. Once there was a serious girl called Eleanor Roosevelt. When she was a teenager, Eleanor was sent to school in London. There, she met an extraordinary teacher named Marie Souvest. Miss Souvest wanted Eleanor to think for herself, to be free and independent. Eleanor studied with her for three years. Then she was summoned home because her grandmother wanted her to get married. Back in the United States, Eleanor met another Roosevelt. His name was Franklin Delano. They got married, but soon after he contracted polio. The disease left him paralyzed from the waist down. Could you imagine? I couldn't, but Eleanor didn't let him give up on his dreams. With her determination and support, he went on to become the president of the United States. And as first lady, Eleanor gave speeches. She traveled through all the states and became a champion for human rights. She believed that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. And she was determined to promote those rights in as many countries as possible. After her husband died, Eleanor was named the U.S. Delegate to the United Nations. She became the chairperson of the Commission on Human Rights and the creation of one of the most important documents of the 20th century. It's called the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This beautiful document inspired governments to pass laws protecting human life and encouraged citizens to take action when their fundamental rights were denied. Thanks to Eleanor and to the tireless work of many representatives from all over the world, freedom, equality, dignity, respect, and safety became common goals for all people in all nations. 
So she's pretty awesome. Look forward to many more stories. On to you, Jasmina. Thanks, Cassie. Hi, my name is Jasmina, and I'm the Vice President of North America Channel at Everbridge, and I'm also on the board for the Alliance of Channel Women. Today, I'll be reading a story from Goodnight Stories, Rebel Girls 2. In this book, I chose Madonna because she never quit to accomplish any of her goals in anything she put her mind to. Once in a small town, split in half by a river, a star was born. Her name was Madonna. She was smart and got top grades in school, but she always, always realized that she was a little bit different. More than anything, Madonna knew exactly what she wanted and would not let anyone change her dreams. Some people felt intimidated by her strength and clarity of mind, but Madonna didn't let them hold her back. When she was 20 years old, she moved to New York City with just $35 in her pocket. It was the first time she had taken a plane and the first time she had taken a cab. It was the bravest thing I've ever done, she said. Madonna worked as a singer in clubs and as a waitress in coffee shops. She worked hard. She tried and failed and tried again numerous times. In those days, it was very rare for female artists to be the masters of their own destiny. They would let their male managers, producers, and agents make most of their decisions for them. Not Madonna. I am my own experiment, she declared. I am my own work of art. Through her music, Madonna inspired hundreds of millions of people to stay true to themselves and stand proud, even in the face of adversity. I've been popular and unpopular, successful and unsuccessful, loved and loathed, and I know how meaningless it is. Therefore, I feel free to take whatever risks I want, she explained. Her huge talent, tremendous self-discipline, and fierce determination have made her one of the most influential pop artists in history. This is a picture of Madonna. Beautiful young lady, too. So I hope you all enjoyed the story. I'm going to pass this book now over to Lisa to read you guys the next story. There you go, Lisa, and thank you. Thank you, Jasmina. Hi. My name is Lisa Miller, and I am on the board of Alliance of Channel Women. I am also the co-chair of the mentoring committee. I today am going to read from Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls 2, and who I selected is Oprah Winfrey. The reason I selected Oprah Winfrey is because she talks about finding her passion. When you find your passion in life, um, any work that you do will never feel like a job and it will never feel hard. So always strive to go after your passion. Now, let's read. All right, Oprah Winfrey. She is a TV host, an actress, and a businesswoman. A lot of things. Once there was a little girl who interviewed crows. Yes, the black birds, crows. She also interviewed her corncob dolls, and she was so good at reciting from the Bible that people nicknamed her the preacher. Her name was Oprah, and she loved to talk. But her family didn't listen. Her mother brushed her away, saying, Be quiet. I don't have time for you. Her grandmother never let her cry, even when she beat the girl. People will think you're weak, she said, but keeping everything bottled up inside was unbearable. So Oprah kept looking for opportunities to speak out. She kept looking for people who would listen to what she had to say. First, she joined the public speaking team in her high school, and then she took a job at a local radio station and eventually she joined a Baltimore TV news show as co-anchor. Her family and friends were very excited, but deep inside, Oprah wasn't sure that reporting the news was what she loved the most. She was fired from the show and given a low-rated early morning talk show. Hmm. Oprah thought her career was over. Instead, while interviewing an ice cream seller, she discovered her greatest talent. People started to love the show because she really listened to her guests 
If they cried, she felt their sadness. If they were angry, she understood their pain. And if they were happy, she laughed with them. Oprah became the queen of talk shows. She moved on to national television, launched her own TV network, and became a multi-billionaire, not millionaire, billionaire, and one of the most generous philanthropists in history. So when you find your passion in life, ladies, young ladies, um, it will never feel like work. So keep going for your passion and know that anything is possible. Thank you. I'm now going to hand this over to Lori. Here you go. Hi, my name is Lori Graber and I'm the sales operations manager at Telesystem. And I'm also on the Alliance of Channel Women board. Uh, Today, I will be reading a story from Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls, the second edition. Um, and I um, actually didn't choose this story. I asked my eight-year-old daughter to, to help me pick a book to, or a, st a story to read today. And she asked if I would read this one. And her reasoning is that she is a Girl Scout and I am also a Girl Scout on her leader, and she said that she thought it was a nice story and it would probably be one for that other girls would like to hear as well. So I'm going to get started. Giselle was a single mother with five children. She worked hard to pay the rent on their low-cost apartment, but when the landlord sold the building, she couldn't afford another place, and she and her kids found themselves homeless. The city of New York had rented 10 floors to shelter homeless families at a motel in the Queens neighborhood. And that's where Giselle and her children went. At the time, Giselle was working at the Girl Scouts of Greater New York. So she thought, why not start a troop in the shelter? And she did. At the first meeting, there were only eight girls. But she didn't give up. Through word of mouth and flyers, Troop 6000 grew to 28 members, some as young as five years old. Being homeless is not easy, Giselle said. I hope the girls in Troop 6000 learn that tough times are just seasons in their lives and that they will surpass it. Troop 6000 is the first one for homeless girls in New York City, but many more will follow. Unfortunately, homelessness is still a serious problem across America. We are like a pack, said Giselle's daughter, Karina. If one of us is down, the rest of us will be there to pick them back up. Like other Girl Scouts and Girl Guides, Karina and her friends love adventure. They cultivate courage and honesty, responsibility and strength. They know that no matter where you're from or where you live, that's what being a Girl Scout is all about. I hope that you enjoyed this story this evening that I read. And now I'm going to pass the book off to Michelle to read another story to you guys. Thank you, Lori. Hi, everyone. My name is Michelle Kattelcheck, and I'm here today to read you a short story from the book, Good Night Stories, Rebel Girls, Volume 2. I chose to read about Audrey Hepburn. Um, I chose her because of all of the charity work that she has done, as well as Breakfast at Tiffany's just happens to be my favorite movie. So let's get started. Audrey Hepburn, actress. Once upon a time in Holland, there was a little girl named Audrey who ate tulips. It wasn't because she loved flowers, though. It was because she was so hungry. Life in Holland during the Second World War was hard. There was never enough food on the table, and Audrey often felt the pangs of hunger in her empty stomach. Tulip buds didn't taste good, but they kept her from starving. When Audrey was older, she moved to England and became a film actress. She was admired the world over for her elegant figure and her luminous beauty. 
Famous fashion designers flocked to her and she became a style icon known for her little black dress, long white gloves, and diamond tiara. After her most famous film, Breakfast at Tiffany's was released, the Hepburn look became so popular that women used to dress exactly like her. They would even visit the famous jewelry store in New York City to stand in the exact same spot that she did. But Audrey wanted to do more than just star in films and be admired for her clothing. She wanted to help others, especially poor and hungry children. Children who were as hungry as she had once been. She dedicated her life to Yousef, the same charity that had helped her when she was a little girl during the war. She believed that no child should ever go as hungry as she had and had to eat tulips. When Audrey died, a pure white tulip was named in her honor to celebrate the wonderful work that she did with UNICEF. So here's a picture of Audrey. Uh, and at the bottom down here is one of my favorite quotes. As you grow older, you will discover that you have two hands, one for helping yourself and one for helping others. So I hope you enjoyed this short story as much as I enjoyed reading it to you. I'm gonna hand the book off now to Penny for your next story. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Penny Thurno. I'm the VP of Strategic Alliance and Channel at PowerNet, and I'm also on the board for Alliance of Channel Women. And today I will be reading a story from the book, Good Night Stories, Rebel Girls 2. And the story that I've chose for you today is Nadia Comaneci. And I chose this story because as a little girl, um, Growing up, I was always watching gymnastics, and even now um, when the Olympics are on, I get drawn to gymnastics. I am just so amazed at the training and discipline that these girls have and the dedication they put in um, and all the hard work it is. So I hope you enjoy this story. Um, let's begin. So Nadia Comaneci was born November 12th, 1961. When she was six years old, Nadia wanted to do one thing, cartwheels. At the time, cartwheels were a very big deal in her country, Romania, but Nadia didn't know that yet. One day she was playing in the schoolyard when she was spotted by a famous gymnastics coach named Bella Caroli. He thought that with the right training, Nadia could become a great gymnast and bring glory to the communist regime in Romania. Training was hard. If the kids made a mistake, Bella would beat them with his huge hands. They had to train for six hours a day, seven days a week. He wanted his gymnast to be perfect. And Nadia became perfect, literally. At the age of 14, she scored a 10 at the Olympic Games in Montreal. No gymnast had ever received a perfect score before. People were amazed at her faultless performances on the beam, the vault, the uneven bars. Nadia became a legend. In fact, she became so famous that the Romanian leader grew worried she would overshadow him. He wouldn't let her leave the country for any other reason but to compete. So Nadia decided to escape. One morning, she walked for six hours through muddy woodlands and crossed the border in Hungary on foot. From there, she moved to the United States, where she was welcomed as a refugee. In America, Nadia started a family and built a business. She loved gymnastics and worked to promote it in the way she liked most, as a free woman. The quote Nadia has here is, you must figure out your own destination and the best route to get it there because no one else knows the way. I hope you enjoyed this story on Nadia Comaneci. And I'm going to pass this over to Raquel to read you the next story and close this out for us. Thank you. Thank you, Penny. Hi, my name is Raquel Wiley and I too am a proud board member of the Alliance of Channel Women. 
The story that I'm going to share with you on today is about Madam C.J. Walker. She, like many of the trailblazers that you have already heard about, um, has made huge contributions um, to our history. But she was very, very special to uh, women of color. And um, you will know why after you uh, hear the facts about her story. So let's go ahead and get started. Once upon a time on a cotton plantation in Louisiana, a little girl named Sarah was born. Sarah's four older siblings had been born into slavery as had their parents before them. But thanks to an important law called the Emancipation of Proclamation, Sarah was the first in her family to be born free. When Sarah was 14, she moved to St. Louis, Missouri, where she worked as a washerwoman for a dollar and 50 cents per day. Imagine that. And at night she attended school. During that time, Sarah started losing her hair. So she experimented with various products and treatments, but unfortunately none of the available products at the time worked for her. So Sarah began to think, what if I create a treatment that is specifically for African Americans. Hmm. Her husband who worked in advertising, he loved the idea. So much so, he suggested she change her name to Madam C.J. Walker to make her products more appealing and more marketable to um, the market. And so she did. Sarah started traveling all over the country to promote her hair care line and gave demonstrations of the Walker hair care system, which consisted of the formula of homemade pomade, which is a scented oil, heated combs, and a particular style of brushing the hair to stimulate the hair growth. Her demonstrations were so popular, she started hiring other women to per to promote her products. And soon, Walker agents became well known all over the country. Sarah's success encouraged other women to create their own companies and she supported those companies and she supported many other charities providing educational opportunities to African Americans. Madam C.J. Walker became the first female self-made millionaire in America. Wow, right? Like many of the trailblazers um, that you have heard about on today, um, Madam C.J. Walker was well known for, um, you know, various quotes that was inspirational. And so I want to share one with you um, today and it reads as such. I am not satisfied in making money for myself. I endeavor to provide employment for hundreds of women of my race. Madam C.J. Walker was born on December the 23rd, 1867, and she laid to rest on May the 25th, 1919. This is the picture of Madam C.J. Walker. On behalf of the entire board of the Alliance of Channel Women, we hope that you have um, enjoyed all of the short stories that you have heard about. Uh, we truly have enjoyed and we honored the opportunity in sharing with you in this capacity. The short stories that we shared are featured within this uh, book called Good Night Stories for Rebel 2 Girls 2. If you do not already have um, this masterpiece within your home libraries, we do encourage you to go to Amazon and get it right away. Um, we were able to share seven, seven stories uh, with you of, again, female uh, leaders who have made huge contributions to our history, um, but there is literally a hundred stories and a hundred women 
featured in this book. So again, we do encourage that you add this uh, to your home libraries um, if you do not already have so. Again, we do not take this opportunity lightly to be able to share with you. We hope that we will have the opportunity to do so in the future or we hope that you too will share with us. We also hope that you all are continuing to be safe um, as we find ourselves in a global pandemic. Hope that you guys are um, um, you know, making sure that you are social distancing properly based on the regions that you guys are in. Um, and most importantly, that you are safe and that you are healthy. Again, Thank you, thank you, thank you for the opportunity to share with you. And again, we look forward to doing so again in the near future. Until then, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.